Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of May 21st through 27th. Today is Saturday, May 27th. So this week I actually got through quite a few things um, reading wise. I did pull out a project that I haven't worked on for quite a while and I do have a small yarn haul for you. So let's get into it. So there was one title from last week that I forgot to talk to you guys about because there was just so much that I was trying to wrap up there. But um, I'll start with that one. So I did read Ladies on Top Volume 2. This is Story and Art by Niji Ganameta, uh, published by Steamship, rated Older Teen 17 Plus. So this is a story about our two characters, our female character here on the cover, and a male character. Um, in the first volume, they are realizing that they do not conform to society's norms on what is expected in the bedroom. And so at the time that they meet each other, they're kind of realizing things they like, things they don't like, and they start to date and are kind of exploring those things with each other. And so I really enjoyed the first volume. I thought the communication between our couple was really good. This volume, though, I got a little bit ticked off because in the first volume, we kind of see their previous relationships like right before these two meet and start to date and the guy's ex-girlfriend is not nice to him in fact she says some not nice things to him in the bedroom and it even worsens his like confidence within himself and so in this volume she shows up again and the way that whole like chapter went down I did not like it I wanted to kick the male characters but because he didn't stop things where he should have yeah things just were let to go on too long in the situation that had occurred that I got really angry and I lost respect for him. After all of that went down, like our character here on the cover, she kind of is a witness to it right before he shuts it down. And even with that, it kind of felt like she was already witness to too much. So I'm surprised at how she reacted to the situation, if you know what I mean. So I definitely didn't enjoy this volume as much as I had enjoyed the first one. But I'm hoping it'll get back to where our couple is communicating more um, in the third volume. Now also something that bothered me in this volume is that I kind of feel like everything is being focused on the man's needs and not our female characters needs there's no reciprocation that I'm feeling um, this is very much focused on him at this moment and I'm not quite sure why that is but I feel like what she's doing is catering to him and what he ends up doing towards the end of this volume also caters to him. And again, there's a scene here with our couple and they're in the bedroom. And I feel like he was just really like rude in the way that whole scene went down. And so I didn't like that either. This as a series is not really graphic. But there are like things, which is why it's rated as 17 plus. But yeah, I was a little let down by this volume. I am still going to continue to the third volume, but I did not enjoy this one as much as I did the first one. So I think I gave this one three stars 
and yeah a little bit let down i do like the art style though it's very very cute and yeah i think that's pretty much all i can say about this so i'm hoping that things will turn around for me in the third volume now this week i finished my bleach three in one edition this is volumes 40 41 and 42 by tight kubo uh, published by viz rated teen so this is like a supernatural battle type manga and in this one we are still in hueco mundo and we are still dealing in like the fake katakuta town with the captains and things like that and things are just really really amped up right now lots of fighting lots of battling we're getting to see the captains show their colors and their special abilities and all things like that and it's really really interesting and so yes really really enjoyed this volume definitely need to make sure that i continue on to the next one in a shorter amount of time than i have been letting go between volumes because i do really want to get this series done by the end of the year this is a series that i've been meaning to read for a really long time and it is a series that i have enjoyed in anime and so I do want to get this one done by the end of the year, which means I need to pick up more volumes faster. So I'm hoping to do that soon. Really, really enjoyed that one. Gave it five stars. I also picked up Villains Are Destined to Die, Volume 2. This one's by Sewell, original story by Guan Gyo Ul. This one's published by Ize Press, rated teen. <laughs> um, this is about this woman here on the cover who ends up being transported into an otome game that she really enjoyed playing and she ends up being transported into the game as the villainess and so she's kind of trying to work her way out of this game with her knowledge of playing it so at this point in time she is trying to level up her affection with the characters involved to try to figure out which one is going to be able to help her get the best outcome for the game so that she can hopefully get out of the game and so yeah i really enjoyed this one again lots of different things going on where she's like trying to figure out who to like pin her hopes on i guess and it's just really interesting i really like the art style in this it is full color, so that's really great as well. There is a couple things in here where her interactions with some of the people, I wasn't too sure about what she was doing or how it was being interpreted by the other character. Um, but I did really enjoy this. So much so that I almost jumped into the third one. I do have it it is sitting in the manga haul bag for may but i typically wait until i haul those before i read them plus if i read it then i'd have to wait a long time until the next one came out so kind of don't want to do that i am really enjoying the series i am looking forward to reading more of this one and i gave this volume four stars the last volume I read this week was Volume 1 of Yakuza Fiancé. This is by Asuka Konishi, published by Seven Seas Rated Older Teen, 17+. Plus. So this story is about our two characters here on the cover. They are betrothed to each other by their grandparents, who are heads of feuding Yakuza clans. And so in order to try to have a peace treaty... Um, they betrothed their grandchildren to each other. So our female character here on the cover actually lives in a different town. And so once they become betrothed to each other, she needs to move to, I believe, Tokyo to live with our male character and his family. And she has not really had a great school life. Like, people know that she's the granddaughter of Yakuza boss, and they don't look at her. They avoid her at all costs. Nobody wants to be friends with her because the Yakuza is scary. And she's just like, I don't really want to do this. But her grandfather's like, 
just go and try it out. You know, this is for a peace treaty. Just see what you think. You know, I met him. He's a great guy. And so she figures, you know, what the heck? Let me do this. So she moves to Tokyo and ends up living with this guy and his family, switching schools. And it's kind of kind of the same thing over again. No, nobody really knows about her, but they treat her poorly. Uh, because she's seen with this guy who's like super popular all the girls love him and you know this guy is very suave he seems to be very kind and always smiling and so she's kind of like feeling a little bit strange because i mean he's the grandson of yakuza right how how is he so nice and smiley and things like that and so Later on in the volume, his true colors kind of come out. And so she reciprocates and her true colors come out. And so now they're kind of trying to get to know each other more really. And at the end of this volume, there is a mystery that is brought into the story. And so I'm really looking forward to finding out more about that mystery. But overall, I would say I did enjoy this volume. There are comical elements to this story because her female character is kind of reactive to things a lot. And the way she reacts to things is that like comedic kind of reaction where it's over the top and big, huge eyeballs and, you know, the stances and things like that. And so there's comedy there. I'm definitely interested to see how they navigate this relationship because this cover makes you think that, you know, they're, like, in it together. They are, like, attracted to each other immediately, and that's definitely not how this story goes. So I feel like this cover is definitely misleading because this is not where they're at by the end of this volume, which I'm glad for because if it was like that, I would have a little bit more reservations, I guess. I'm liking their banter at this point. I'm really liking their banter. I'm liking how she pushes him. And yeah, there's an interesting dynamic there. And so I'm definitely interested in continuing with this one as well and seeing what that mystery is all about also. So I gave this one four stars also. This one is not full color. This one is black and white. Um, the art style is definitely different for me. I'm enjoying it. And so, yes, definitely enjoyed that one. So that's everything that I finished this week. So lots more manga. Really, really glad to be getting through a lot more manga. Um, next month, like I said, is going to be another manga heavy month. So that's going to be really fun as well. So, yeah, I'm just really enjoying what I've been picking up, I guess. At least as far as the manga goes. Now, I am still in the middle of two things. This week, so let me just tell you where I'm at with those. So I am continuing to read Hyde by Tracy Clark. This is my Kindle First Reads uh, prompt thing. And uh, this is that mystery, um, or I guess it's, a, is it called a thriller? I can't remember if it says Detective Harriet Foster Thriller on the cover. But something tells me it does. In any case, we're following this d detective, Harriet Foster. And, you know, last week I told you that I had a big problem with her new partner. And where I am right now, which is about 70% into the book, I'm on chapter 52. Um, she now has a new partner. So definitely some things happening there. Um, her other partner is still working the case with her, but just not with her directly. Um, there's this new partner. I'm really enjoying the new partner. Uh, but <laughs> I had to stop listening to the audiobook. Um, I was finding that as I was listening to the audiobook, my mind was starting to wander and I wasn't absorbing everything that was being said. So normally when that happens, that means I'm that the audiobook is not keeping my interest. And so I stopped listening to the audiobook. I went back through what I had listened through that day in the ebook and I read through those sections again. And it 
was much better. I definitely missed some stuff. So I definitely tuned out um, while I was listening, which is not a good sign. So I'm going to continue this one um, on my ebook copy. Where I'm at right now, there's another player in the game. And we're kind of getting her perspective as well. So now we're getting a whole bunch of different people's perspectives. And I would say things that are going on at this point is interesting. The investigation is interesting. I'm hearing from all of our different characters' point of views is interesting. And so I had, like, thought that maybe one of the characters we had come across ha was the suspect. I'm kind of doubting who is probably the one that they're setting up is actually the person. Like, I feel like there was a assumption given to the readers like early on in this story about who the perpetrator is but I had started to doubt that and I had thought that maybe another character could be but at this point I'm just like I don't know there's too many like players in the game there's too many voices being being um presented and with the multiple POVs and things it's just too hard for me to figure out who is who. So at this point, I'm just kind of like lean, leaning back and letting the story unfold for me and not trying to think about who the culprit could be because I think it could be a number of different people. And I think the author is doing a great job like bringing your focus in to different people. Like the way that we're getting different pieces really makes you think, oh, hey, it might be this person. Well, no, wait, it might be this person. And I think it's done in a really clever way. And so I'm just kind of just trying to enjoy my ride through this book and see where it all ends up. I'm definitely enjoying this new partner a lot more than the older partner. Um, but we'll see if that sticks by the end of this book. And yeah, just enjoying it. Got 30% more to go and I'm looking forward to seeing who the actual culprit is. So that's where I am with that. I will finish this by the end of the month. I thought I was going to have it done by this week, but that audiobook issue that I had just kind of made me have to take a pause with it for a day or two this week. And so I am a little bit behind where I thought I would be by the end of this week, but I'm still enjoying it and I'm looking forward to seeing where it all ends up. During those days where I kind of got hung up with the audiobook for Hyde, I picked up another audiobook. So I would like to have an audiobook going during my lunch break. I feel like if I'm not like having my audiobook during my lunch break, I feel like I'm missing out on something during the day. And so I decided to go ahead and pick up the audiobook for Vacancy by K.R. Alexander. This is a middle grade thriller. I picked this one up, I think, last year, um, intending on reading it for middle grade May, but, or maybe it was March Mystery Madness last year, but I never got around to it. And this one was the one that caught my eye the most. This one is about a girl who moves into a town after her mother dies. And in this town, there's this hotel called the Carlisle. And she's been having dreams about it. And one day when she's at school with her new friends who are getting bullied, um, a dare comes up, a dare to stay at this hotel for one night and it's kind of a thing that happens every year. It's, it's like a tradition. But in the way that it's presented to her friends, it's more like a threat kind of thing. Um, they don't, the bullies don't think that they'd be able to withstand the dare. But in order to prove themselves and kind of get the bullies off their back, her and her friends are willing to go through with this dare. And so this hotel, obviously, I mean, it's run down. It's been vacant for a long time. And like I said, our main character in this story has been having dreams about this hotel. 
So she doesn't have a great feeling about doing this, but she's all in for this. She is just really kind of wanting to get the bullies off her friend's back and wondering about these dreams that she's having. And the tagline on the back here says, this hotel isn't just haunted, it's hungry. And so I am on chapter 15 right now, page 91. So I'm about halfway, not quite, but about. And something just happened where I am right now where things are happening. Like something like completely interesting just happened. And I'm just like really, really invested into what's going on here at this moment. Um, I read K.R. Alexander's Bury Me, I believe it was last year, which was about a doll that kept reappearing to this kid and her friends. She couldn't get rid of it. I really enjoyed that. And with this one, I'm really enjoying how this story is unfolding as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting through this one and seeing how this one ends up. And I'm really looking forward to reading more of Kara Alexander's work because I think this author works for me. I do have a lot more of their books. Um, in fact, there are a few back here um, for more scares, check out it, and there's like three more. I have them all and I'm just really looking forward to it. So yes, this one definitely kind of has like that almost rose red-esque vibe, but not that it, it constantly expands, but like that same like creepy vibe where you're in a rundown place and things start to happen, that kind of thing. And so I'm really, really enjoying it. This is the, the type of book that I've been looking for for a while. And so if you know of any more books like this where we're dealing with like a haunted house or a haunted hotel and people going in and like experiencing things that you found interesting and really good, let me know what those are down in the comments below because I really enjoy books like that, but I haven't been very successful in finding a lot of books like that. And the ones that I have read have not really hit the spot for me. So like any kind of like normal people just going into places like this or like ghost hunters trying to check out a place or even like, you know, scientists doing experiments, kind of like The Haunting, that movie, um, where they're doing a sleep study in this rundown place. Anything like that. Let me know if you have found something that you really enjoy that is like that. I would love to know because I'm really, really enjoying this one. And I think it's what I have been looking for for a while. So looking forward to finishing that. I should be able to finish that one this week as well. And so, yeah, that is everything that I have read or am reading so far. Let me get into some knitting content now. So this week, I didn't knit very much. So this is the Demon Slayer sock that I showed you last week. I did not put in very much on this. In fact, I only knit on it last night. And so... I have about this much, so I was here, where the silver thing is, when I talked to you last week, and so I've only done about this much. I'm not even done with the ribbing, but maybe I'll get that done tonight while we're watching television. This is the Demon Slayer yarn from Hawari Bazaar from the Anime Yarn Club in May of 2022. This is my coordinating mini skein. So, yeah, didn't do too much. But it's really, really nice. I'm enjoying all of those colors and I'm looking forward to having more fabric so that I can see more of those colors. And so, yes, that is my Demon Slayer uh, socks in the Otterly Adorable Knits Shark bag. But this week I had a class. So my classes for my work are pretty much just online lectures that are like the whole day. And so I needed a specific project to work on because online lectures can be rather boring. <laughs> and especially if you don't really need to like retain what is being said in the lecture because there's no test afterwards. So I 
needed something to do because otherwise I would fall asleep. <laughs> so I pulled out this project. Um, this is a really, really old project. I guess it's not really, really old. I started it last year, but I haven't touched it since last year. Um, this is in my 80s, like, cartoon bag that my mom made for me. And this is my love note. So last year I started a love note sweater. And then it started to get too hot to work on the love note sweater. Because the love note sweater has um, mohair. And so I really, really needed a project where I could just go round and round and round and not have to think about it. Now, I do have my advent sweater, but because I have all of those mini skeins, I would need to wind the skeins. And with the class being online, there's always like a pop up box every once in a while just to make sure that you're in attendance, you're there, you know, that you have to click on and submit so that they can make sure that you're taking the entire class. And so I couldn't have something where I was like looking down. So I had to have something that I could do while still focusing on the computer screen. And so I had, I couldn't do my um, advent sweater because of all of the winding that I would have to do and and all of that finagling. I didn't want to have to deal with that. So I knew I had this one where I was just in the section where I was just going round and round and round and round. So I pulled it out. So my love note sweater, I am knitting in this cone of yarn. This is from Brown Sheep Company. This is their nature spun fingering yarn, which is 100% wool. This is a one pound cone in the color Hurricane Seas. And it doesn't say how much yardage there is here. Um, yeah. But it is 100% wool fingering weight yarn. So I have this. And then my mohair, I am alternating skeins. So this is the mohair that I'm using. This is hand dyed mohair from Lolo Did It. Oh. What is the colorway? I can't remember. This is in her Molo base, which is her mohair um, silk. Mohair silk. And the colorway that I have is called Honey Dukes. It was what I thought it was. So it's just like a pastel -y rainbow kind of uh, dye job with the um, like mint. It's almost... Well, I don't know if it's mint. It's more of a light aqua base. So it's a light aqua mohair with all of those pastel rainbow variegations in it. So I've got two skeins here. I do have a third. I have three skeins of this. So I'm only using two right now. I'm not sure if I'll need to break into the third. And so I am holding the mohair double with the comb. So I'm only alternating the mohair. I'm not alternating the regular colors. And it's working out rather well for me. Let me see if I can hold this up without having it slip off my needles. So this is what I have so far. So yeah, I am really, really enjoying that. Um, hold it closer. So you can kind of see where all of those rainbow speckles or rainbow pieces are coming out in the mohair, but you're all also getting that really nice dark teal color. And um, yeah, so I am about there. So I've done maybe six inches under the arm. When I showed this the last time, I was here, and so I did all of this during class, which doesn't look like it's a lot. I did maybe two inches worth, but, you know, I am knitting um, 
English style and not continental on this one, which also made it helpful because when I knit English style, I don't need to um, look at my hands while I'm knitting. And so, yeah, very, very pleased with how this is turning out so far. I still have lots to go, but this is going to be lovely. I'm really, really enjoying how like squishy this fabric is. It's really, really squishy. And this, the way that the mohair is like popping is very surprising to me because I did not know like what this was going to look like. I just took a chance and I'm actually very, very happy with how this is turning out. It is very, very pretty. Like I can see all of those different colors in there. And it's just gorgeous. So I'm very, very happy. Once I get this done, it's going to be beautiful. But I have to get it done. <laughs> I did have a little bit of a snafu um, when I pulled this out to work on it since it's been such a long time. Um, one of these things that I have for the sleeve holders had actually undone itself. So it was open and about seven stitches had fallen off of the needle. Thank goodness they didn't like start to unwind themselves. So I was able to just like go and pick them all back up and re snap that shut. But yes, very, very happy with this. Hopefully I'll be able to get it done sometime soon. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good project to have while I was taking my class because otherwise I would have been sitting there twiddling my thumbs, probably falling asleep. <laughs> but yeah, I was talking to my friend Shannon from Planet Shannon TV, I think her channel name is, um, Shannon Riddler, um, about, you know, as I get older, I kind of feel like I need to have a variety of different projects for different situations on hand whereas before I would be happy just to knit on whatever I was knitting on provided it wasn't a super complicated pattern now there are definite times where I feel like I need okay I specifically need a sock pattern um, because I can like go round and round and round and you know, maybe not have to think so much, especially if it's a pattern that I've done a lot before, or if it's just a single uh, stockinette stitch sock or, you know, things like that. Um, I could just, you know, work on that while I'm watching TV. And I can work on a little bit more complicated type projects while I'm watching television, but in situations where I have my class and I need to make sure that I'm focusing on what's going on on the screen I need something where I can just like knit kind of mindlessly and so that's where projects like this come along I also had my mostly ghostly that I was considering but with that one I am doing increases down the side panels and so I'd have to make sure to count you know the number of rows so that I could put in another increase and I was afraid that by concentrating on that I would miss my check-in and so that was not an option so yeah there, there are different types of projects that I need for situations and I could have pulled out a sock but again with most of the socks that I have on the needles I'm doing magic loop and so you're constantly pulling pulling the sock around and flipping it over and then you know, going to the end of the row and then turning it around again. And it, it just was going to be too much, I think, with having to try to check in uh, for my class. And so I'm glad that I had this available to me. And it was great. It was really great. I got a couple inches in. Wasn't as much as, you know, I might have had. But hey. Two inches progress is better than no inches progress, right? So I'm glad to have that. It's kind of re-inspired my want to finish this project, even though it'll be too warm to wear soon, I think. Uh, but I'm really, really loving it. And so, yes, I love this bag, too. It's got all of my, like, nostalgic cartoon characters from when I was a kid. And so, yes really really happy with this project 
And I will probably work on that some more this week, I would think. So, yeah, that's everything that I worked on as far as knitting goes. I did tell you that I had a small yarn haul. I just have one skein. And so it's my uh, bi-monthly yarn club from Little Skein and the Big Wolf. So this is my Anne of Green Gables um, inspired yarn club. It's called the Kindred Spirits Yarn Club. And so I got that one or my my installment for this past month and she sends like this little envelope here with a couple of different things inside and so I have two of these little like coaster things and it just says thanks it tells you how to get in touch with her and if you have any questions it has her email address on it so I have those and then I have this like postcard thing and it says Kindred Spirits, a surprise skein yarn club inspired by Anne of Green Gables. So if you know Anne of Green Gables, this is an iconic scene with Anne and Diana. Um, and on the back of it, it says, what will you make? And it gives you a bunch of like options for like one skein projects. So socks, fingerless mitts, one skein, scarf, a shawlette, pop of color, save your skeins to work on a big, bigger project. So that's helpful. And then um, we have this card here, which tells you what the colorway is called, which months it's for, and then a little bit more about the Anne of Green Gable inspired colorway I created or she created for us. So this month's skein is called Warbled. It's the April and May skein. It says Warbled is a brown gray, lightly speckled neutral inspired by the baby birds that floated around Green Gables during spring. I took my inspiration from a particular passage about the path and walk to school that came alive with birch trees and bird calls in the spring. I named the colorway for the Canadian warbler bird that is rare but present on Prince Edward Island. This neutral will pair beautifully with many skeins of my previous club colorways, so I hope this skein will occupy a useful place in your stash and future projects. So I thought that was really nice. I think these cards are new. I don't recall them being in the um, little envelopes before because she used to email us this information. But I had noticed that we didn't get that email this, this last time, and so I was like, I wonder what this colorway is inspired for, like what's it look like and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really glad that she's including it with the yarn club when it ships now. And so the skein looks like this. It's a very cool tone brown. And this is on her cashmere base. She switched her blend um, or her base for the yarn club was it at the end of last year or something like that? So it's 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon, 420 yards, and 115 grams. And so it tells you what the colorway is on the back, which month's um, yarn club it was for, and it says inspired by Anne of Green Gables. So, yeah, it's like a really, really cool toned brown. And then it's got these, like, specks of color in there. I can definitely pick up like blue and red whoops so yeah they're like it's really really lightly speckled and I definitely see blue and red but I don't really see any other colors but again it's hard to tell when it's all skeined up like this but yeah I'm not sure what I'd use this for I'm sure I could find something <laughs> but I haven't used very many of my Kindred Spirit skeins. I used one, I think, in my... I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> um, but my uh, mohair and fingering weight faded fade uh, sweater that I did, the pink one. Um, I'll put the name down here. But yeah, I use one of the skeins there. I have a couple of the skeins set aside for a like knitted tee. I think it's the Summer Sorrel um, in a fade. So I have those. And then I have a bunch of like random ones like this where I'm like not sure what to do with them. But the more that I collect, like with the 
ones that I put aside for the summer sorrel, I can kind of like put together skeins for bigger projects because yeah, sure, I'm going to use some of them for socks. I'm sure I will, but I am not a shawl knitter. I don't wear shawls. And so it doesn't make sense for me to make shawls um, unless I'm going to use it as some kind of like blanket, like a schlanket. Um, if it was like really big like that to use, you know, at home. Um, but yeah, so it's either got to be like a sweater, a pullover, a cardigan, a shirt, tank, something garment wise. So I obviously need more skeins for that. So yeah, I'm just happily collecting the skeins at the moment. They're always really beautiful. I've never had a skein that I hadn't liked yet. And I really, really enjoy hearing her inspiration for the colorways. And so, yes, I will continue to be a member of the Yarn Club because I really do enjoy that. And so, yeah, I think other than that, I did purchase a sweater pattern this week. Um, Stephen West came out with a, like, striped it's like micro stripe sweater pattern. Can't remember what it's called. It was like 20% off because he was just like putting it out into the world. And so I did pick that one up because I think that's the one that I'm going to use for my 31 residents of Haunted Mansion advent calendar that I am getting for this year. Um, if I don't use it for my Fangirl Fibers Disney advent calendar that I had last year because that was also 31 days and I think with how the stripes are in his pattern I should be able to get every single colorway in the sweater so I should probably use the one that I had gotten first other than my haunted mansion sweater but I thought it might be nice to try to work on the sweater at least the body section as I opened up skeins. I don't know if that's going to be feasible. I feel like the stripes on that new sweater pattern are thin enough where I would be able to keep up. But I have not been successful in keeping up with any kind of advent knit yet. <laughs> so... It might, it, it's something that I'm thinking about. It's something that I'm thinking about, but I will definitely need to like buckle down and actually do it and put the time in. I think I can do it. I think I can do it, but we'll have to see. So I think I am going to hold my Haunted Mansion advent calendar to open at Christmas time. So what I'll probably do again is open it around Thanksgiving and start it then so that my last skein opens on Christmas. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything I have for you this week. Let me know if you have read anything interesting or done anything interesting this week. Or let me know what your best read of this month is. By the time you see this video, it will be the last day of May. So... Let me know what your highest or lowest rated read of the month were, because I'd really love to know. I still have a few days um, to tell you, so I'll definitely let you know about those in my end of the month reading reflection video, as always. But I hope you have all had a really great month, have had a really great week, and let me know what your reading plans are for June, or if you have any fun and exciting plans coming up. I would love to know. And if nothing else, and you'd just like to let me know that you were here, if you could leave me some kind of bird emoji, because this is inspired by a bird, um, down in the comments below, that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out. And that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smiley always. Bye.